In this lecture, we are going to learn about NG on init lifecycle hook. The NG on init lifecycle hook, it gets called after the execution of NG on changes lifecycle hook is complete. So Angular raises NG on init lifecycle hook after it creates the component and update its input properties. And this hook is raised after NG on changes. Also keep in mind that the NG on init hook is fired only once, that is during the first change direction cycle. After that, if the input property changes, this hook does not get called. So this is the difference between ng on changes and ng on init. When the Angular component loads for the first time, during the first change detection cycle, when the input property of a component changes, both ng on changes and ng on init will be called. But ng on will it will be called after ng on changes. After that, if the input property changes, then only ng on changes will be called. ng on init will not get called. Okay. So let's try to understand ng on init lifecycle hook with an example. So here in the demo component, we already have a constructor for that component and also ng on changes. Let me go ahead and let me comment these two lines from here. Okay, let's also comment this line from here. And let me go ahead and let me add one more hook, which is ng on init. And this ng on init lifecycle hook, it is provided by an interface called on init. So if you want, we can also implement that. So here I'm going to implement on init interface. So it is this interface which provides this ng on init lifecycle hook. And in order to use this interface, let's go ahead and let's import it from angular slash co. All right. And inside this ng on init, I will simply write a console.log statement. And there I want to log some message. So basically here I want to say ng on init called. With this, if I save the changes and if you go to the web page, if I open developer console, you will see that first the constructor of the demo component has been called. After that, ng on changes lifecycle hook has been called. And after that only, ng on init lifecycle hook has been called. Now, if I go ahead and if I type something inside this text box, let's say hello, and when I click on the submit button, what will happen is, this text will be assigned if I go to app component.ts file. So that text will be assigned to this input well property. And then we are assigning the value stored in this input well property to this message property of demo component. Okay, so when we click on that submit button, this value will also get assigned to this message property. So in that case, the value stored in this message property will change. And when that will happen, you will notice that ng on changes will be called, but ng on init lifecycle hook, it will not get called. Let's actually see that. So when I click on the submit button, this hello has been assigned to the message property. And when the value of that message property has changed, you will notice that ng on changes lifecycle hook has been called, but ng on init lifecycle hook has not been called. That's because as we learned, ng on init lifecycle hook will be called only once during the first change detection cycle when the input property will be updated. I hope it is clear. Also, by the time the ng on init lifecycle hook gets called, none of the child components or projected contents or views are available at this point. That's why any property decorated with at view child decorator or at view children decorator or at content child decorator or at content children decorator will not be available to use. Let's try to understand this with an example. So let me go to demo component.html and what I will do is on this paragraph element, I'll go ahead and I will add a template reference variable and let me simply call it temp. Now I want to access a reference of this paragraph element in the component class. For that, we have learned that we can use at view child decorator. So I'll create a property here. I'll call it temp para. It is going to be of type element ref. Okay, because inside this temp para, we are going to store a reference of a DOM element. And in order to do that, I'm going to decorate it with at view child decorator. Okay, and in order to use this at view child decorator, we also need to import it from angular slash co. And we also need to import it element ref from angular slash co. And to this at view child decorator, we need to pass a selector. For the selector, I'm going to copy the template reference variable name and I'll pass it here. Okay, and let's try to log this temp para in ng on init. 
so here let's say console.log this dot temp para dot native element and let's say we want to log the inner html of that native element okay if you save the changes and if you go to the web page you will see that we have an error here and the error says cannot read property of undefined when it is trying to read this native element property so basically when we are trying to read this native element property this this dot temp para here it is returning undefined now why is that that's because as we learned by the time this ng on init life cycle hook gets called by that time the view is not created yet okay so by the time this ng on init life cycle hook gets called the child components are not created the projected content will not be available inside this demo component if we are projecting something from the parent component and also its view is not rendered yet keep this point in mind so with these examples i hope the use of ng on init life cycle hook is clear to you and this ng on init it is the perfect place to add any initialization logic because it gets called only once and it gets called during the first change detection cycle after the input properties are updated all right now before i wrap up this lecture i also want to show you one more thing so what i'm going to do is i will open app component.ts file there currently we have this input well property which is of type string now what i will do is i will make this input well property as an array of string okay and to this i will assign an array and inside that array let's have two elements let's say hello and let's also have another element let's say hi there okay now here we have an error that's because now this input well is no more a string value now it is an array so what we will do is whenever the button in the web page will be clicked whatever value the user has typed inside the text box we will add it to this array for that here i will simply use dot push method and here we want to push the value stored in input el dot value okay so whatever value the user has entered inside this input element we want to push it to this array then we also want to assign this input well to this message property so currently this message property is a string value so if i go to demo component.ts there it is of type string as you can see so let's make this also as array of string okay and let's remove this console.log statement because it is giving us an error because by the time we are trying to access this temp para property it is decorated with view child decorator so by that time this property has not been initialized yet okay so let me comment this console.log statement with this if you go to the web page you will notice that here it is logging hello and hi there now what i will also do is on this paragraph element so let's go to demo component.html and on this paragraph element let's use ng for directive so what we want is we want to repeat this paragraph for each element inside the message array so here let's say let message of message okay and here we want to log message colon and then the value stored in this message variable with this if we go to the web page now it should log something like this okay so if i type something inside this text box let's say hello john and when i click on this submit button you see hello john has been added here but you will not see ng on changes life cycle hook gets called now why is that we know that ng on init life cycle hook will not get called because it gets called only once but here the value of the message property has changed earlier it had only two elements but now it has three elements but still this ng on changes life cycle hook has not been called now why is that that's because to this message property now we are assigning an array and keep in mind that array is of reference type okay so this message property it is going to store a reference now when we have added a new element in that array that array has changed but its reference has not changed reference is still same 
so since the reference has not changed that means the message property is still storing the same reference that means this message property has not changed at all and because of that the ng on changes lifecycle hook has not been called if the reference of this message property changes then only the ng on changes lifecycle hook will be called so in this case since it is of reference type the reference of this property should change when we are going to store a value type to this message property in that case if the value changes then the ng on changes lifecycle hook will be called but currently we are storing a reference type to this message property so in this case the reference of this message property should change in order to call the ng on changes lifecycle hook i hope this point is clear so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day